Welcome to Miami. I'm Brett Baer. Tuesday morning, I'll sit down with Governor Mitt Romney as he campaigns here in Miami. Many, many candidates are spending more time in Florida this year. The latest state polling in the GOP nomination battle is from 18 days ago. Quinnipiac had Florida registered Republican voters choosing Herman Cain first at 27 percent, Mitt Romney at 21 percent, Newt Gingrich at 17, and Rick Perry at 5. No other candidate broke 4 percent. But as we've seen in this race, a lot can happen in just 18 days. Today, we caught up with Florida's freshman senator, an up-and-comer in his party, about politics, policy, and the presidential race. We are now watching political parties evolve in our time, and it's fascinating to cover it in a classroom while it's happening. As much as he can, Republican Senator Marco Rubio becomes Professor Rubio at a Florida International University class he co-teaches on political parties. You as the individual are now empowered to start movements that are independent from political parties or even traditional political structures. The lesson today taps into his Tea Party roots and the non-traditional campaign that vaulted him to victory in 2010. There is no way that a candidate who the National Republican Senatorial Committee and much of the leadership of the state party was against could have won in 1990. But you can win in 2010 and 2012. Now a fast rising star in the GOP, Senator Rubio says it's hard to overstate the importance of his state in the nominating process. With the Florida primary batting cleanup in January, the final of the first four contests, and a testing ground with general election implications. If you look at the way it's lined up, I think it's perfect. It requires the candidates to deal with all the major issues, and, and you wind up in a state like Florida, which if you can't win in Florida, you can't win nationally. Besides the top issue of getting jobs and improving the overall economy, another key issue here is immigration. An issue that's gained prominence on the campaign trail this past week, with Speaker Gingrich coming under fire for mentioning a plan to start dealing with the 11 million plus illegal immigrants currently in the U.S. Amnesty traditionally has been defined as a path to citizenship, and I don't think that's what he talked about. What he talked about was some middle road accommodation for people who have been in this country for a long time, and that has to be explored. But let me tell you how we get to that point, and we're not at that point yet. And I think Speaker Gingrich would acknowledge that. And here's how you get to that point. First and foremost is you've got, you've got to win the confidence of the American people back. And that begins with border security, where I think there has been progress made. More progress needs to be made. Also on, on uh, employment enforcement. We need to create a mechanism where employers are required to and can safely and reliably and cost effectively verify that the people that they're hiring are legally in this country. I think when we accomplish step one, step two would be then to create a legal immigration system that works. And that's where I think Republicans need to focus more on. It's not just what we're against. We're clearly against illegal immigration. We are for legal immigration. And we support legal immigration. And quite frankly, the legal immigration system we have now doesn't function. So let's go out and modernize our legal immigration system. Let's reform our visa programs. Let's create a functional guest worker program so that it works. And I think if you do those two things, then I think you can move to step three, and that is beginning to answer the very difficult question of what to do with 11, 12 million people who are in this country, many of whom have been here for a very long time, many of whom are brought here as very young children, have grown up here their entire lives, are high academic achievers, and have a lot to contribute to America's future. I think most Americans are willing to figure out a way to, to perhaps deal with that issue, but only after the first two parts, a modernization of our legal immigration system and a real enforcement of our immigration laws. So when the word amnesty is lobbed around in a primary election environment, is that dangerous? Uh, when the issue of immigration is so sensitive. I think it's important for Republicans to understand that when you talk about immigration, these aren't just statistics. These are human beings. These are real people. Yes, some, sure, sure, some people come here and to take advantage of our country and the laws, but many come here because they can't find a better life, because their kids are hungry, because their wife is suffering, because their family is in a dire strait, and they're going to do anything they can to help their families out, and there are jobs in the United States uh, that, that, that are willing to hire them. And so we need to recognize that these are human beings that are looking for a better life. Unfortunately, you know, they've either come here in violation of the law, or we don't have a functional immigration system in place for them to be able to come here. When it comes to U.S. policy towards Cuba and increasing calls for the U.S. to end its economic embargo of the Castro regime, Senator Rubio insists Cuba needs to make the first move. And I always chuckle because everyone's always talking about when is the U.S. going to change towards Cuba? And my question is, when is Cuba going to change towards the U.S.? And when's Cuba going to change towards its own people? When is Cuba going to join other countries in the hemisphere, even Nicaragua and Venezuela, and have elections? And when they do that, then we should talk about changing our relationship. And until they do that, I think we should be on the side of democracy. Back to the presidential campaign. 
Are you going to endorse? I have a lot of people running that I've had relationships with or have been helpful to me. And um, so I, I'm really not inclined to endorse in the primary. I am looking forward to having a nominee because I think I'm confident, looking at this field, looking at the way the field is shaping up, that we as Republicans are going to nominate someone who is going to be a very clear and very appealing alternative to the direction President Obama is taking America. You've been asked this question ad nauseum about a possible, you know, if you were asked to be a vice presidential nominee. And you were pretty definitive in that you said you like being Florida senator and that you would say no. That There's hasn't a, changed over Thanksgiving. And that hasn't changed. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Not over Turkey. It hasn't. And as Suffolk University polls suggest, if you were on a ticket, no matter who the nominee is, that you could somehow sway Florida to go GOP. Would you reevaluate that? See, I don't believe those polls. And I can show you a poll that says the opposite. The bottom line is presidential elections are decided by the top of the ticket. Can someone on the bottom of the ticket weigh you down or slow you down? Sure. But, but ultimately what decides the election and what people vote for is for the president of the United States because that's the guy or the, or the gal that's going to be calling the shots. And so if someone wants to win Florida, it's very simple. You have to come to Florida. You have to explain to the people of Florida what it is you're going to do if you're president to create jobs, to grow our economy, to secure our national defense, to win the war on terror, to deal with the broken immigration system, to bring freedom and democracy to Cuba and to the Western Hemisphere, to stand with our friends in Israel. These are the issues that are important to America. They happen to be very important in Florida. And they have to be articulated by a presidential candidate, not by a vice presidential candidate. So you're in the same place. Still a no. Yeah, absolutely. Senator Rubio is now working with Democratic Senator Chris Coons from Delaware to try to pass a scaled back jobs bill. Let's at least make a list of things we do agree on and let's get those things done. And, and, and at least let's do that. And so I hope that that's what we'll do with the Agree Act. I think it's important that we do it. People are desperate for any glimmer of good news out of Washington. Senator Rubio, today Professor Rubio, says he's learning something every day about trying to get things done in the political spotlight. The, the takeaway I wanted you to have is whether you agree, well, that's distracting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Even that broke my concentration. I asked Senator Rubio about the recent charge that he embellished his parents' story coming to the U.S. from Cuba in the 50s. He said he learned a great deal from that incident as well. The specific years, he said, were off on his website, and that was his mistake. But he insisted he wasn't trying to fool anyone. His parents were Cuban exiles who would have liked to have gone back to their ancestral home, but couldn't. He says in the spotlight, every detail counts.